Well, it's a late winter's morning here in Tasmania, probably around about 10 degrees. Uh, sun is probably about maybe six or seven degrees above the horizon, so pretty weak. But this panel is, uh, which is rated to um, six volts, is putting out close to seven, and it does that pretty consistently. And so I'm not sure how many ampoliters that might be pouring into uh, the battery, but it's a lithium ion battery, I think nominally 4.2 volts. And this is a new board for me. This is the IP2312. I typically have used, uh, I think it's TP4056, um, but these boards here have come in and the project for me is uh, to maybe, we'll start with a single 18650 battery, uh, which is when the sun's up will be charged by this guy and then hooked up to an ESP32, probably C6. Uh, and so that will form initially a Wi-Fi extender, but eventually a Wi-Fi mesh uh, covering the, uh, the area outside the house. But uh, first things first, I wanna measure with the current coming through. Uh, at the moment, this battery, which is has um, just been put in there. So let's see what it's cranking at the moment. So I see 3.596 volts. So we'll leave it there for uh, an hour or so and come back and measure it and see if this thing is going to work firstly, just to charge up the battery. And then we'll see if we can hook up the ESP32 C6 to it and, uh, and use it as a Wi-Fi extender. Good stuff. A lot of boring math later. Not too successful over the last hour or so probably because I should have read the specs of the IP2312 and the input voltage should be capped at about five and a half volts from what I read. And I had seven coming in there, so not much happening. But I have put a Xena across the input now and the Xena is 5.1 volts. And uh, now we're starting to see some action. I just hope I haven't fried the board. We'll see how it goes in the next hour or so. Unfortunately, also the sun is fading away already as the front comes through. But hey, that's science for you. Well, the IP2312 didn't work out really well. Uh, so I've gone back to the TP4056. I suspect that that uh, IP2312 is more suited to multiple cells. And when it comes to single cell, maybe the old, uh, the old technology is the best. So now we're starting to climb again, which is good. Uh, so I think we will run with the TP4056. We've probably got about an hour of light left uh, and see if we can get any ergs into this battery whatsoever today. That would be a nice result. So TP4056 for the win. Not sure what the problem is with the IP2312. Could be a bad batch, of course. I think I might continue testing that. I might extend it out to two cells and see if that works. But this is fully charged and, uh, and that's the main thing. So onwards and upwards, let's get to the programming of the ESP32C6. So the code journey starts with this little guy, Martin. He's a genius, obviously, coding at his age. Uh, and years ago, I don't know what age he is there, but years ago he coded, look at that, five years ago at least, he's coded this ESP32 Wi-Fi extender. And it's great, and I've used it before, and it's fine. And so I was going to use it again, but then I spotted a little bit of an update from Danny here, D Crystal, who has written this ESP32 NAT router extended. Pretty much the same code, but he's added a bunch of features. There they are there. You can read through those. And the interface is really pretty, uh, and you can do a lot through that interface. So I thought, okay, that's the one for me. My final GitHub, which you can find here, I'll link all of this down below, by the way, in the... Um, on the blog uh, includes now also this ESP32 router and I do say uh, at the outset that for instance it's based on uh, Martin's code and then uh, in turn it's based on Danny's code and all I've done is add some external in uh, antenna activation code that needs to be done specifically for the ESP32C6 I had had to change the partitions file same same uh, and I've included the binaries here too, in case you don't want to do any of the compiling and linking that I'm about to do. So the bootloader, the firmware, and the partitions binary. And how do you get that onto your ESP32C6? I've added a file, which is basically a script file, 
and that will also allow you to load those binaries. Then it says here, video with all this explained is insert video here. So hopefully by the time you look at it, this video will be linked here. So you can see all this uh, on this as well. Okay, so the journey is a little bit different. Uh, this time I went with Visual Studio Code and uh, so that's downloading the Debian. So I'm sort of moving away or graduating a little bit from the Arduino IDE. Once you've got that installed, uh, you then install Platformio and that seemed to go pretty well. And then also the ESP IDF and that seemed to go pretty well. There's a little bit of mucking around when it comes to what version you want and downloading and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but basically then, um, what we do is we just having a look at the Siege Studio uh, ESP32C6 and you can see that one of the issues was that we've got this external antenna connector but instead of being some resistor that you um, change or solder or whatever, um, basically what you do is that you have this code. And the code looks pretty straightforward, except that it's sort of in the Arduino framework. And I was able to eventually compile the code, but not link the code. Uh, and and so what I had to do was I, after three days of umming and ahhing, I went to Gemini AI and I said, hey, I can compile this, but I can't link it. And Gemini said, well, no wonder you're trying to link these two frameworks together. What you should do is rewrite the whole thing just in ESP32. There's a couple of other options, but this is probably the best option. So instead of, for instance, um, pin mode, you have this reset pin function. Uh, instead of delay, you have VTAST delay. So it's basically the same code, but it's in that framework. And that not only compiled, but it also linked fine. Changing the partition table to match the ESP32C6 was, again, uh, just a matter of reading some stuff. And all I did was change the 1500K to 1600K. I think there's probably some more work I could do here, but basically that worked fine. And what that allows is with this particular device is it allows over the air updates, which I think is pretty cool. It's one of the things that uh, Danny's put into his code, the old over the air updates. So that's nice. And finally, uh, this is the code that you'll also find, the, the little um, uh, code that you'll find on my uh, repository there, which is about how to use ESP tool to upload those uh, binary files. If you don't use Visual Studio Code, let's go have a look at Visual Studio Code now. So here's the Visual Studio Code, uh, and also I've got the, down, down here you'll find the extensions, uh, so I've got Platformio and then I've got the ESP IDF as well. So Platformio is terrific, you can import your Arduino projects, you can open projects, there's lots of examples, there's lots of support. Since the last time that I tried this, which would be at least three or four years ago, I think, I don't, I don't know, some time ago, um, this has got to be a very mature project. So um, yeah, I think moving forward you'll probably see a little bit more of this IDE uh, rather than the Arduino IDE, which will please some people and really annoy some others. Uh, it's the same with the ESP IDF. There's configuring the extension, which takes a little bit of mucking around, but actually runs pretty well. Look at this, tutorials, documentation, examples. You can start a new project, import an old project, etc., etc., etc. Speaking of projects, this is the any file that comes with Platformio for this particular project i didn't change anything except i took out all of the different boards and just left the esp32c6 seeing as how my code is specific for that and then finally uh, this is the main file and if we just scroll down a little bit then we should be able to see here it is added by one circuit and gemini ai there's that code inserted in there uh, all the libraries the definitions the actual um code itself so this is the function and then in the next function which was the original one there's a referral to uh, the function that I've written initialize ext antenna how do you know it's mine I spell initialize correctly and um, yeah this one does not <laughs> that's, that's fine okay so how does it work simply at the end of the day you just push this I mean you there's things that you can change down here right you can change your IDF version number, you can change your, uh, your port that you're using, you can change the uh, target for the code, you just press this button here and it'll go away and build it. It's great at reporting errors and everything else that it's doing. 
and if you have your uh, ESP32 C6 connected up in boot mode, uh, which is a button on the um, on the ESP32 C6 itself, then it'll even upload it. So this button here actually not only compiles it but uploads it as well. And that's all there is to it. So I think, um, you know, if you've got any questions about that whole process, either the reasoning behind it, the code itself, or the process uh, through the IDE, then please leave a message, a comment below. Otherwise, let's move on to um, having flashed that, to putting it all together and uh, hanging it on the, uh, on the wall and seeing if it works. One thing I will say, just having a look at the getting started file, you can see here on the back of the ESP32C6, this is the Seed Studio version, it does have some battery uh, management. So you are able to actually hook up uh, something like an 18650 battery to it and it will do some battery management, some charging and discharging. The only issue I have with that is that it's not mature enough to handle things like I think overcurrent uh, protection is missing. That's why I wanted to put this on a separate board, the TP4056, uh, for instance, to do all the battery management and this thing to just do what I want it to do, which is to run Danny's code with my modifications on it. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, but yeah, if you have any questions about any of this, put them in the comments below. Otherwise, let's move on to the hardware side of things. Well, it's soldering time and, uh, oh, that's a dusty thing, isn't it? Let's just fix that up. So we're ready for the putting it all together phase. Um, interestingly enough though, I mean, this is a six volt rated solar panel. And what has come in just in the last day or two is a five volt rated one. So you might remember when we were looking at this that I had to put a Zener in there. Well, perhaps didn't have to, but just to reduce the voltage of the input so that it didn't freak out the, uh, the adapter, the uh, charger too much. And uh, anyway, since then, these five volt jobbies have come in which is pretty schmick. So yeah, same mounting system, um, same USB-C uh, connector. I wonder if it's a bit smaller because it's five volt. I guess that's probably what's gonna happen. Uh, actually, it's the same size, it's interesting. No markings on the back of either of them to indicate that one's five volt and one's six volt. But um, yeah, that's peculiar they look pretty much the same to me um but anyway so that's one possibility i guess is uh, to maybe change this to a five volt instead of a six volt i won't do that now but that's one possibility uh the other thing that's come in is this guy so this is for two 18 650 batteries and it's a sort it's built as a ups so it's got here lx 2 b ups and uh, there's three possibilities. It can be a five volt, a nine volt, or a 12 volt UPS. This is five volt. And so what you would presumably do is you would connect up your uh, solar panel to here, USB-C, and have two 18650s. And then the outski is, uh, the outski is, I guess these pads here. That's what it says. So it says uh, UPS plus and UPS minus. No, that can't be. That's got to be the battery terminals. Where is? Although it's a couple of big pads on either side, so I'd probably have to explore that. But I think ultimately that this or something similar will replace this one here for two reasons. I'm pretty sure that one 18650 battery isn't going to do it long term. Um, but the second thing is I think that this will probably monitor, balance, and take care of a few things that maybe this one doesn't. Uh, and so that is the uh, theory. There's a couple of pads here too. It's going to be interesting to actually put a couple of live batteries in there and connect it up and see, firstly, if uh, it will charge. We should do that now. Let's put this in. This might be enough light in here to actually get some action. Or is there? Yes, look at that. I can see an LED. I hope you can see an LED. And, oh, there's something happening in there as well. A nice red light. So just we just need some batteries to go in there. Uh, do we have any? Um, do we have any? Not. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Right. 
Let's get these guys out for their shell. Tada, two batteries. So, positive, positive. I have blown up a few of these by not checking carefully, so just watch that. And, okay. Nice. So theoretically, these are charging from just the studio lights, which is nice. But what I'm interested in is, where does the 5 volts come out for your UPS? Or in my case, not UPS, but going towards the um, the little tiny guy here, our ESP32. Um, don't lose him. He's the, uh, he's the whole point. All right. Okay, so we want uh, select, let's not go auto. Let's go DC. Okay, cool. So I'm thinking maybe maybe these pads. I don't know what they're for otherwise. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can look at this. Yeah, bang, look at that. Five beautiful volts. Five zero zero. Okay, and then the other thing on the other side, which I'm not sure about, are these two pads here. What do they do? They do nothing. So that would have been interesting, wouldn't it? Soldering up those guys. Well, this also says that the other in here it says five volt plus and five volt minus, and it said that says three point five five. Well, that's not good. Yeah, and this end says well, that could be a little clearer. All right. So for future reference, this is where our UPS five volts comes out of, and um, I think this guy will be terrific. So as we see this project evolve. Uh, and take over. So it'll turn in, it'll turn from a router to a mesh, and it'll turn from, I think, two 18, uh, one 18650 battery uh, uh, via the TPS4056 to this monstrosity or something similar, and two 18650s. But all the while, um, yeah, powered by the great ergonometer in the sky. 150 million miles away, nuclear powered, can't get any better than that. All right, let's get the original one sold up just for L-O-L-S, let's do it. Well, it's looking a bit uh, temporary, isn't it, on the side of the shed here? But look, it's working. And in fact, uh, up in the paddock, the house Wi-Fi is barely ticking over, but the extender is going really, really well, particularly when the sun's out, which makes me think I should have probably put uh, a big honking capacitor across the VCC and ground, which is what I did for the ESP8266 extender. So I don't know why I forgot to on this one, but that certainly helps. And I think, yeah, probably the sooner I go to two batteries, uh, the better in terms of power delivery. But proof of concept, uh, it's working pretty well. I think we can, uh, I think we can build on this. So yeah, thanks for sticking around for the journey. Uh, that's the circuit working for this week. We'll see you next time.